Next step in the Harvey V series, we're going to square up our rip fence. Next. I'm Rick, and this Shut the heck up, you stinking boosters. <laughs> this is the shack. Hey everybody, welcome. In this video, we're going to get our rip fence all set up. Now, you can throw it down there, kind of adjust it, and leave it. Personally, I have a completely different way I want to do this. There's certain analness about me that I like things certain ways. So again, don't bag on me for doing this. This is what I want to do. You do whatever you want to do with your table saw. I'm just going to show you what I do with mine, but mainly how you adjust this to get it square with that miter slot so everything is in line with the miter slot, the blade, your rip fence. Okay, so let's just dive into it. Now before you get to this point, I like to kind of back up a little bit. Once you get your wings mounted to your table saw, before you mount your front and back rail, I got a couple of suggestions. I first had my front rail level with the bottom part of this chamfer here on the front, front of the table saw. When I put this on, it was way too high. Even though you have the adjustment here, I didn't want it that high. In my case, I actually went 5 16 of an inch down, have my square level there, 5 16 of an inch. Yep, 5 16 dead on. So that's how I set the front level. You can go start at a quarter inch and adjust from there. Personally, I went to 5 16 For me, it worked out. And the back rail, make sure it doesn't interfere with your miter slot. So what I did was I got my square, got my depth, which in this case, mine is right at 7 16 So I figured I'm going to add a 16 So I set it at half an inch. That'll give me just enough. That'd be perfect. So I Set the back row just underneath my square, got one end snug, went to the other end, snugged it, set my level on, made sure I was level, tighten it up, good to go. It's below the miter slot, I have no issue. Uh, and I do mean level. I tighten one side at that depth, brought the other side up, got that depth, checked the level so I could make any fine adjustments, tighten them all up, and I'm good to go. It's nothing interferes with the miter slot in the back now. So that's how I set my rails up. Once you have your rails set up, then you set your rip fence on. Now, this is personal choice, okay? I'm tired of the negativity I'm getting on this, but this is the way I see it. This is my anal view coming on. This is how I want my rip fence set up. You have play adjustment in the front, height adjustment on top. You have another height adjustment back here. You have a hole back there to drop your included Allen wrench into to adjust the back. When I set this on here, it was a little high for me. Personally, I want it lower. Not just the rip fence, I want the whole unit lower. So after I got mine set on here, I actually took the, uh, the high-low fence off and set the rip fence completely on my table saw. Then I raised it up where I had eighth of an inch clearance underneath it. And that was it, that's plenty. For me, that's how I wanted it. I want it low and sleek. Then I put this on and I use my two card method and I've used it on a few things. I put two business cards here, two business cards here, set it on there, then tighten that up and that's where this is setting at now. It just sets perfect. This is why I chose to do this. If I was to redesign this, this is what I would do. You have a single bar here. It's just a square bar. The channel is just a square channel. The problem is it's not like a dovetail. So as you clamp it, it just pulls it in. There's nothing at an angle that will self-center it as it's tightened. So when you put it on, when I grab in the middle, 
even snug it a little bit. You have play. That's why I chose to do what I did because there is play when I put it back on. If I happen to take off and put it down to low, when I put it back on, I will put the two business cards, one in the back, one in the front, set it on there, that way it keeps it level all the way across, then tighten it up and it keeps that plane all the way across because there is some movement. You only have the one bar here. It has a little movement down here. Now, if they would have done one bar, cut this maybe in half, put one bar here and one bar here, that would take away from some of that movement down there. But it's all held right here. That wasn't enough for me. That's my analness, my personal choice. Don't bag on me, this is the way I am. Now, I sound a little irritated because I'm just kind of fed up with the, some of the comments I've been getting. So that's why when I took that off, I dropped this completely down. Then I raised these up till I had about an eighth of an inch here. And the way I did it was when it was on the ground, I got the measurement, checked it out, moved it up about an eighth of an inch, set it back down there. So as this was raising, when it started to grab the square and lift it up, that was high enough. Did the same thing in the back. And when I did that, then I set my level on here and I am dead on. Actually, it needs to go down a little bit now. Or where was I at? No, I'm good. I'm sorry. I couldn't read it down there. Then I'd make fine adjustments on it till this was dead level. It's level with my table saw. Perfect. Level here. Perfect. Then I turned it this way. I adjusted these two knobs and got this thing level. And you see right here? Dead level there too. So now I am set. Tighten this down. Tighten that down my rip fence base is perfect now. Now, when I go, I can slide this on. Get a flush right here. Just me, I want a flush there. Give my two business cards. Just slide it there. Slide it here. See, look at, you don't have much play here. Look at the play you have here. Now I can tighten it up. Let me ask back there a little bit right there. And I'm good to go. And it's perfect. Just enough clearance. Oop, there we go. Glides smoothly. So now that this is set for the height that I like, it is level always around. Now I can get it over here next to my miter slot and I can start dialing it in to get it true to the miter slot. A little, another tip real quick. You don't want it zero here, zero there. Old school, you have this going to the right of the blade for relief. So as it goes through here, the, the wood has a little relief, so it's not pushing against this, so it's not pushing to the left against the blade to pinch. You want it a couple of thousandths off down here, at least I do. The way I have it set now, I think I'm two to three thousandths off here to the right zero here. That's just me. You don't want it dead square, you want a little relief. Haven't even used the miter gauge yet, don't know if it's square or not. Haven't got to that point, still trying to get these other videos out. So I'm going to take off my guard, all this stuff, move this over to the miter slot, and I'm going to show you what it is now, and I'm going to explain to you how you get it through. Now I move it over here, I get my gauge set up, and we're going to go through this, and I'm going to tell you how you adjust this to get yours set, and that's it. Very easy, very simple. Just probably 10 minutes it should take you to get it squared up. This is my saw gauge. This was actually the very first tool I ever purchased from Woodpecker, I think eight years ago. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do, you set these two pins in here, this little saddle thing straddles those two and keeps this center, no matter if it goes wider or thin, if there's any variances down here, it keeps it center up here. And then I'm gonna set this on here, probably about right there. 
I'm going to slide this till it does, just touches, lock it down. You want to lock it because that pushes against the fence here, the, the guide rail secures it. So if there's any play like this, it pushes back and holds it secure. So that way, if the front is one way or the other, it's going to come back and keep it parallel. You have two adjustment screws down here on either end. They're between the uh, fence and your table saw. So with that set there, I'm going to dial this to zero. So if the end down there is tilted towards the blade, it will go to the plus side. It'll go up from zero up to 10, it will go to the plus. If the blade, if the fence is tilted to the right, which way it should be for the relief, it will go negative one, two, three, whatever. So now that that's set at zero, I'm going to, I'll use my phone, I'll, I'll film this just so I can see and you can see. Um, is that zero? Dang it. Okay. You see me here, I got my phone above it. I am zeroed right there, that's dead on. I'm just gonna hold my finger here and we're gonna slide it. And see it's going up, so that means it's going away. And I am right there, I am perfect. I'm like two thousandths or three thousandths, I can't see from here. So if I pull it like it's coming towards me, see that's what we don't want that way. We want it to go negative so we are perfect. This thing is still, Lined, lined up exactly, and we're back to zero. Mine is set, so I'm going to show you how I got it that way. You're going to have to find some way to reference. Some people say just, I am flush here, but if you see down here, I'm going to see if I can zoom the uh, picture in. It's a little bit proud, so the fence is sitting back from this just a little bit it's perfect that's that's me that's my personal preference that's what i want so you could flush it up here and, and just adjust it till it just feels a little proud down here that's another way you could do it if you have the gauge do it that way or if you can somehow use a um a square do it that way personally I like i like the saw gauge the dial indicator it really gives me accuracy i'm looking for now, regardless of which method you use, um, right down here, I don't know if you can see it or not, I'm lift my finger there, see? There's a slot there. That actually lines up with the two adjusting screws for your fence to go left or right. The included Allen wrench, you can go underneath here, see right there, and you can get to that Allen, that Allen set screw and adjust it that way. Basically, what I did was I left it factory, got my measurements. It was off to the right, too far off. So I left this one as it was. You unlock it. You don't lock it down, you unlock it so it moves. And literally, what I did was, if you're looking at from one to three, I would tighten it a little bit, tightening the bolt down, would push it away, kicking it to the left. So what I did was, I literally went from 12 to one. Just that little adjustment, put my rip fence against my, my dial in indicator again, lock it down. You have to lock it, that way it pushes it tight against the fence. And I got my measurement again. I unlocked it, moved it out of the way, lined it up so I could get underneath here. You have one on this side and on the other side, both sides. Got my Allen wrench in there and did the same thing from noon to one, just a little turn. Brought it back over. That's what I did like three or four times, locked it down till I got that final measurement of zero here, two to three thousandths down there, relief. Perfect. That's how you do it. That simple. Now, the last thing you want to set is the play here as it moves up and down. Factory, you have quite a bit of play. It will move quite a bit. This, just a little bit. That's all you want. You unloosen these little locking screws on your set screws, your little locking tabs, whatever you want to call them. Have it unlocked, because you want to check how freely it glides. Basically, I just let it, with my hand, just rolled it till it stopped, pushed against this, did the same thing on that side, locked it down and checked it. It was a little tight, so I just back it off. Again, 12 to one, this time I'm going 12 to 11, back it off, just a little turn, tighten that back on, 
And that's where I'm at now, and this thing just glides. It's perfect. Just a little bit of play, enough to give it the free movement I need for it to slide up and down smooth. When I get to the point, lock it down, I'm done. So check this video out once this is set to set up your measuring tape. That simple again just a few little guidelines little tips on helping you get things straight get it square and now you have a precision machine up and running you can get some fantastic results now I'm not saying that every time I set my my rip fence to two inch three inch four inch or whatever I'm gonna get dead on results every time <laughs> no you can't get that repeatability out of this you can get very close but you can't get that repeatability. Incra fence, yes, because it locks in the same measurement every single time, but that just goes to show with a little bit of extra time, little fudging, fine tuning, the results that you can get out of your table saw. So I am up and running with fantastic results. Um, I am very happy with this. I am ecstatic. I still stand behind Harvey. I think it is a fantastic table saw. I have no issues. Fortunately, I had the lottery ticket and I got the one that was bad, but they had no issues. They exchanged it and I got a phenomenal table saw now. That's the main takeaway from all of this. That is it on this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be blessed. Take back. Check it for your sanity. Ugh. Now I got all these videos done, getting the setup, I think I can finally start getting into my jigs and some projects. Thanks again for watching. We will see you next video.